Welcome to Sew Very Easy. My name is Laura and let's take one long piece of fabric, do some folding, one row of stitching, and turn it into a little wallet. For this wallet, I am going to be using a piece of fabric from Benartex, and this is their pearlized marble. It's a very, very pretty fabric, and I only need one piece. So the piece of fabric we need is five inches by 27 inches. This is going to give us the entire wallet. Because this is a quilting cotton, I do want to stabilize this a little bit. So I did put a piece of lightweight fusible interfacing on the back, and it's only a quarter inch smaller all the way around. The wallet is going to consist of some lines, and we're going to press. When we finish pressing, it's all going to get together just like an accordion. The first thing I need to do is press these seams back. I did leave a quarter inch space, so I'm going to be able to press that back upon itself. And you can put just a little bit of glue to hold that. I just glued those edges over with a fabric glue. It's temporary, but it's just going to keep those in the spot that I need. I now am going to draw some lines. Some lines on the back and some lines on the front. From your left side, draw over a line at four and a half inches. And that line is going to go on the back. We're going to go to the right side and draw another line at four and a half inches. And that four and a half inches is going to come from that fold. From the fold up, we now need ten inches. So we have three lines on the back. Flip over to the front. On the left side, we're going to draw a line two and a quarter inch from that fold. And then from the right side, we're going to do a two and a half. And then from the fold, a seven inch mark. So from the front, we have a two and a quarter, a two and a half, and then a seven. And on the back side, a four and a half, a four and a half, and a ten inch. From here, we are going to need to press it. Where we see the lines, we're going to be able to press along those lines. So we're going to have three presses along the back, and then when we turn it over, we're going to have three presses along the front. We just want to make sure that we don't unpress what we pressed before. So take that line, fold it along the line, and then just press that edge. It can be a nice firm press, but we do not want to unpress anything. So we have that one press, and then turn it around and press the back. So we're going to have those presses right inside. Turn it to the right side, and just fold those presses this piece is now 12 inches. We have two folds on one side and one on the other. And both those top pieces will have that seam allowance folded in and we did glue it. Now we're going to take that and fold it right in half. And I would recommend pressing that flat and having those edges all match up. We need to do one row of stitching. We're going to back stitch on this side where all of those folds are. Come up, around, and back stitch here. So we do need to do some type of a curve. We could use bottles to give that curve shape, circles, plates. I like to use a four and a half inch circle. And I want that circle to go in a quarter inch and a quarter inch from that top. So we have a nice curve, and this curve really is a personal choice. Now we're going to be able to back stitch, stitch all the way around on that line, and back stitch right at this corner. So we will not be stitching this thick part where all of those folds are. We can now trim down those seam allowances. And you might want to take a little bit of the bulk out in between. 
so I like to step it. I have one seam that's larger and then it gets smaller and smaller. And then once those are all trimmed, just trim off a little bit in that corner. Once those seam allowances are trimmed, we're going to be able to turn this right side out. And there's only one way we can do it. If we look, there's only one opening. So let's turn that right side out. And we're going to be able to push out that nice curve. As we're looking at that inside, we're going to have those two areas that we did glue down. We're going to be able to whip stitch that closed. That really does give it a nice finish. So one side has one pocket, the other side has two. We want to take that one pocket and flip it to the double side. So that seam that we stitched will be inside. And we can poke out those corners. What we're looking at now is three pockets and the back is clear. At this stage, I like to press it on one side, press it on the other, and then press that flap over. To close this up, we could put a buttonhole and a button, or we can add some different types of snaps. There's many different sew-on snaps. We can also get snaps that are hammered in. I like to have the hammer-in snaps. I love the way they look, and you can get them with some decorative ends to them. And this wallet is now done. We have three pockets. The inside is closed up. It's small, it's portable, and it only took one row of stitching. So this little wallet with three compartments only took one row of stitching right around that U. Except, of course, that little hand stitching in the bottom. And you don't really need to do that hand stitching. It's sort of hidden inside. I just like the way the finished look is. It's a quick project. It definitely would be a nice project for some friends. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. I do have a newsletter. It's all free under So Very Easy. Thanks again. Bye for now.